Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to HVAC Restoration Makes Dollars and Cents. This is Frank Santini, and I'm here with Troy Raska. Today's agenda, AHU performance and deferred maintenance, HVAC-related IAQ, in other words, indoor air quality issues, foul coils and energy efficiency, HVAC new life processes, including preparation and refinishing, pure steam cleaning, pure coat and pure liner, and pure cell insulation. Then we'll look at restoration versus replacement principles, and finally, warranty information. Quick background on your speakers today. My name is Frank Santini again. I'm an, I'm an attorney, graduated from Stetson in 2008. I was second in my law school class, and I practiced commercial litigation and personal injury law. I've been uh, lucky enough to be recognized by Super Lawyers Magazine and recognized as AV preeminent by Martindale Hubble. Here with me as well as our Director of Marketing, Troy Raska. He has a Bachelor of Arts from, is it Cincinnati University, Troy? I, I have yeah. a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Cincinnati. That's correct. And I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for Pure Air Control Services today. So, and fun. Fun fact about Troy. A big passion of mine, you know, besides IAQ and, and, and this uh, HVAC restoration stuff that we're into now, uh, is music. I've always loved music as a little kid, and all through uh, high school and college, I played in a variety of different bands and was fortunate enough to put out a few records and even tour the country a couple of times. So uh, we never got really big, but we played with some big artists, and uh, for that, um, I'm grateful and blessed. And fun fact about me, I was a former professional wrestler, and um, as you can see there in the picture, I wrestled... Uh, in kind of my attorney outfit, as you can see by the suspenders. So anybody who's a wrestling fan out there, contact me separately. <laughs> so uh, let's get back to the business here. So we're talking today about HVAC restoration, what we call new life here at Pure Air Control Services. And uh, we were honored uh, just actually in the past a few weeks, we were notified by Buildings Magazine that our HVAC new life restoration process was chosen um, as one of just 13 solutions across the country. Um, for its money savings uh, capabilities. So we're really honored by that. And, um, and Troy, a great job in, in helping us make that happen. Yeah, no problem. And I think it's, it's pretty remarkable that, that we're right there in the top 13 HVAC products that were uh, honored for their money saving properties. And so that's what we're here to talk to you about today with restoration uh, as one solution, a money saving solution over just straight replacing aging HVAC equipment. So back up for a second here. Interesting little history lesson. You know, a little bit over 100 years ago, uh, the air handler was first invented by a man named Mr. Carrier. We all know of Carrier, obviously, the air handlers. Uh, the basic design and function of the air handler really has changed too much since that first uh, invention. We have the cabinet, obviously, the blower, uh, the coil. Obviously, we've had more advanced control systems developed and implemented, but they're only as good as how the air handler itself is performing. That or maybe the controls must be reprogrammed to work with inefficiency as the air handler, which uh, can in turn throw the entire building uh, envelope out of balance. The good news is there are processes like HVAC New Life that can restore the air handler to near factory specification for a fraction of the cost of redesign or replacement. Now, Talk about Mr. Carrier for a minute. So he was working with a in, a in a printing for a printing press, and so what he did was he was trying to control the temperature and the humidity of that of the printing press. So he used his knowledge of the heating of objects with steam and reversed the process. Instead of, the, instead of sending the air through hot coils, he sent it through cold coils filled with cold water. So interesting little history lesson there for everybody. But that's how the air handler first came about. Now at Pure Air we focused on the specific niche as it relates to HVAC systems, and that is the restoration of the hygiene or cleanliness and the efficiency of the systems. So consider the analogy of the diaper <laughs> to the air handler. I have a three-year-old still in diapers, so I'm dealing with this right now. <laughs> so ideally, a baby's diaper shouldn't smell too much, shouldn't leak, shouldn't be too damp, and should be regularly cleaned. Right. Same same rules really go for an air handler, uh, because if not, formations of endotoxins, 
mycotoxins, bacteria, fungi, pollen, particulates, and other biopollutants can proliferate on the metal surfaces and permeable materials like, like fiberglass insulation. Here's a couple of the stars of the show here now. Uh, we all may have heard of Aspergillus. Um, and that Stachybotrys on the right there is uh, the toxic black mold that we're uh, all familiar with from, from the news. If any of you attended our webinar on mold in the indoor environment last week, uh, Dr. Sahai and uh, Mr. Iraq covered this in detail. And that uh, video is available for replay on our YouTube channel if you really want to dive into mold. Uh, but today we're talking about mold and, and the hygiene as a component uh, that will uh, wreck HVAC and IQ and, and lead to inefficiencies and uh, problems with the people in the building. So let's do a, a, qu a quick quiz real quick, Troy, um, on some of the material we've covered. Uh, okay. By the way, so we're doing a quiz, guys. We're doing six questions today. This will be the first one. And real simple, I think. So what should a baby diaper and an HVAC system have in common? Go ahead. We'll give you about 10 more seconds. This seems like it's a pretty easy one since we just covered it. And we're going to go ahead and close that now. And we'll take a look and see. Let's see here. We'll, we'll look. Oh. There we go. It looks like you all got it right, 100%. Both should be kept clean, dry, and leak-free. So let's uh, get right back in to the presentation right now. Oh, hold on a second. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about indoor air quality uh, and people. All right, so we have the issue of dirty equipment. Um, a lot of the, our clients uh, without, without first being educated, think of, all right, well, common, common first response filters. Have good filters, uh, you're in good, good shape. But even with the best filtration, evaporator coils and internal components of the air handler can become fouled with dust, which in turn becomes a food source for microbes, such as bacteria and fungi. Microbials can cause a range of issues from unpleasant odors to full-blown allergen triggers, or even worse, and this obviously can be costly to a business or institution. I mean, some interesting statistics we've seen is that as a result of indoor quality issues, 64 million workers every year, every year are, effect, are affected. And according to studies by the EPA, they estimate that $60 billion in productivity is lost as a result of indoor quality issues, ranging from humidity issues to ventilation to uh, microbials and VOCs in the air. So really interesting stuff. And that's just a sort of overview of some of the statistics out there. The, uh, our, our laboratory director here who, who did our webinar last week has been published in a number of journals. And his most recent paper was on human skin cells in the HVAC system. Uh, it's kind of an interesting topic that is actually one of the primary components, contaminants in the HVAC system. You may think, oh, human skin cells, no big deal. But bacteria and fungi in the HVAC consume human skin cells. It's, it's, it was one of their primary food sources. And in some cases, it produces ammonia as a byproduct and produces weird body odor and urine smells even. So, it, 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 so it's something that we don't tend to think about, but is, is a big part of, of this equation. And by the way, there's a couple common types of fungi that are, are, are love to eat human skin cells. Uh, microsporum, uh, particularly, which is a, uh, one of the causes of skin infections. And on the bacteria side, uh, staph, staph, staphylococcus, which is obviously a, a dangerous infection as well. So we have a, uh, some interesting uh, microbials that can, that can feed on these human skin cells. Yeah, in the past, this, this, these odors were referred to as like dirty sock syndrome or a general musty smell like you might get from a locker room. And uh, a lot of times, you know, people might associate that with, oh, my ceiling tiles are damp or uh, something of that nature. But in general, uh, you know, a lot of that odor can be coming from uh, coils that are fouled and being blown across and distributed through the entire building. Which brings us to uh, our next uh, statistic. And that is, according to recent studies, 
by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, uh, one out of every six people, one out of every six building occupants who suffer from allergies do so because of bacteria and fungi distributed through the HVAC system. So it is a big problem, like we were talking about with the, uh, you know, 65, uh, 64, 65 million uh, building occupants affected uh, by this. And, you know, again, it leads to uh, allergies, asthma attacks, you know, uh, coming up here in May is uh, Allergy and Asthma Awareness Month. And so, you know, this is an important issue. And, you know, to think that the origin for most of this is right in your HVAC system. And human health effects aside, the unsanitary conditions of the air handler and HVAC system also have a direct effect on energy efficiency. It only takes a very small amount, about 3 16th of an inch of buildup on coils, for example, to decrease efficiency by 21% of the air handler system. So again, just a proof of thought as it relates to that. And, and the reason behind it is it's pretty straightforward. The coils obviously are, are the source of heat transfer and insulating against the heat transfer robs the system of, of its efficiency. And we're talking about anything that can that can attach to the coil surface, whether it's dirt or grease or dust, corrosion, even tobacco smoke. So again, we're talking about health, human health effects. We're talking about energy efficiency. Oh yes, and of course, again, the microorganisms uh, that can attach. So I think we'll go ahead and, and launch our next quiz question right now before we really get it deep uh, into the restoration versus replacement. Uh, so let's, uh, talk about, so I'll do it. So it's how much efficiency is lost from just a small amount of debris on coil, 5%, 10%, 15%, or 21%. All right. We'll let this go. It looks like people are still responding. It looks like everybody's in. Let's take a look at how you did. And it looks like the majority of you did get it right. It's about one fifth of the efficiency of uh, the air handler unit is lost if the coil is fouled just three sixteenths of an inch uh, with dust, debris. And you know, think about how small three sixteenths uh, of an inch uh, is on the coil. I mean, that's like the size of a business card, right? Like the width of a business card. If you had that kind of fouling across the coil, you're losing 20, 21% of uh, your energy efficiency right there. So Frank, uh, let's like get right into it now. This is the, the star of the show and that's restoration versus replacement. So yeah, basic, again, we'll go back to this idea of Mr. Carrier inventing the air handler. The basic design remains unchanged. So it's not as if you're missing out on some wild new technology by choosing to restore versus replace. Uh, and there are many other reasons restoration should be a preferred alternative to replacement. So let's, let's run through a couple of those now uh, to get our brains thinking. First of all, restoration equals less disruption. So just, you know, think about it. Restoration projects across the campus of buildings are undertaken in phases. The major difference is that the HVAC restoration causes less disruption to the occupants of the building. Remember the productivity factor I was talking about before, we're talking about $60 billion of, of lost productivity because of indoor air quality. Well, replacing large systems results in the need for temporary cooling systems typically to be implemented while the main system is shut down or removed or then replaced. And this can cause the building to become out of balance so, and not just from an engineering perspective, but from a workflow perspective. Uh, temporary cooling can be noisy, change traffic patterns in the hallways and offices and things of that nature. And HVAC restoration often takes, but HVAC restoration often takes place outside normal operating hours on nights and weekends. So the system's shut down, cleaned, primed, recoded, reinsulated, doing all the things that we do here at Pure Air, but while nobody's at the building, nobody's even thinking about it being done. Right, so that means less downtime uh, for your operations, less downtime or productivity loss for your occupants, and as we all know, time is money. So these are a few things that a lot of people don't think about when they're putting a new system in uh, or doing straight replacement. Uh, and these are areas that you wanna be thinking about when you're talking about restoration. And uh, here's another one, outside of just straight numbers for numbers energy efficiency, is uh, sustainability. 
So, uh, you know, HVAC New Life and Restoration offers the opportunity uh, for you to restore these units in place. And this can be a very helpful uh, solution, especially if you're in, uh, you know, a tight mechanical room situation where there's just simply no way to get the old equipment out or the new equipment in, or in historical buildings where there's just absolutely no way you're going to pull extra permits and move a whole wall or cut a wall out. And, you know, Frank, we've been in situations before uh, and seen situations where there was a coil replacement that was needed and they couldn't even fit the full coil through the door to get it replaced into this unit inside of a small mechanical room. Yeah, actually, I meant to add that picture to the PowerPoint, but that's true. It happened to one of our clients where they were trying to, we have a picture of two guys trying to fit the coil through the door. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll talk about a case study mm -hmm. uh, a little bit later where we've done some work at Harvard uh, Medical School and they were in some historical buildings and they, there was absolutely no way that they're gonna remove brick and mortar to try to get an old unit out and put a new unit in. Uh, so sometimes restoration is your only option, but it, it is a good option. You know, other things to consider when we're talking about a carbon footprint or sustainability of, of being able to do this uh, from a restoration standpoint is there's no freight or shipping. So you're not trucking the new unit in, trucking a crane in, pulling the old equipment off, putting it on a truck, trucking it back out. Uh, so there's no cranes that, that are belching uh, exhaust into the air, less uh, shipping. Uh, there's none of the scrapping elements of breaking it down and recycling the metal that happens at a scrapyard, or worse yet, you know, just throwing it in a landfill. So restoration uh, really does offer a smaller carbon footprint. So some of our, uh, you know, ESCOs that are on, the webinar today, that, that's something that maybe you don't think about when you're just crunching numbers for straight efficiency, but every little bit counts. So another another piece of this puzzle is the timeline. I mean, we're, when we're doing a, a new air handler installation, there's a lot that goes into it. Obviously, it, it's, it's different for different types of facilities. But we're talking, a, you know, usually about a year timeline from start to finish. You, you got obviously the engineering pre-design phase, uh, looking at sizing requirements, load calculations, preparing the drawings, and, and I won't repeat everything on this slide, but it's, it's a long process, as a lot of our facility directors on this call know, to to, to acquire a new air handler system from start to start to finish. So we like to draw that as sort of a comparison, uh, a contrast to what HVAC New Life Restoration brings to the table, which is a much shorter timeline. And yeah, that's correct. I mean, if, if you look at a normal procurement process, uh, you do, you have the design, the spec, you have to then get your lead purchasing agent. They have to write the entire specs of what you're trying to do. If it's a phased in plan, uh, then you have to go out to bid. That process can be, you know, six months. So you're not even getting the new equipment up there, uh, you know, possibly for even a year. And then what happens if the old equipment is in a not clean state or is affecting the building in some way or is energy uh, inefficient? So, uh, you know, it's still even costing you more money behind the scenes as you're trying to work all of that out. Uh, you know, the good thing, though, is with uh, HVAC New Life and restoration, and especially with uh, cooperative contracts, uh, is that it's a much shorter timeline. I mean, typically, uh, and because it's less cost than replacing it, uh, you know, apples to apples per unit, uh, we can get the bid process going much quicker. Uh, if you choose to use a piggybacking contract or uh, a cooperative purchasing contract, there's no need to go out to bid. You know, these vehicles, as, as many of you guys know, or maybe you don't, uh, being in, in facilities or even ESCOs, uh, is that you know a cooperative purchasing contract is uh, competitively uh, solicited, competitively you know bid on, and then publicly awarded. So it's fully compliant to be used uh, by anyone. So that shortens the time right there by possibly three, six months. Uh, so then all you're doing is getting your budget numbers together, and we're going to talk a little bit about some budget options uh, a little bit later, and then getting uh, the job started. Yeah, a co-op contract is just like a piggyback contract in a sense. So that's a lot of folks know that term. So it's we have a lot of those here at Pure Air. 
Uh, so it just really shortens the timeline for procurement. Again, you're not you're not yeah. sourcing new equipment. You're not waiting for it to be built or customized. You're not waiting for it to be shipped in. Uh, as far as coordinating schedules, so there's a lot a lot less people that are involved in the process of coordinating this as well. So yeah. Frank, let's jump right into the uh, process of uh, the new life restoration. Yeah, from from a thirty thousand uh, foot view, it's really a six step process. First of all, before you do a restoration, um, I mean, the key starting point restoration is an environmental cleaning of the air handler, and we use a proprietary steam process, which I'll get into more in a few moments, but that's the key piece of it, not just in the coil, but the entire air handler is environmentally cleaned. And then we prepare all the internal components as needed, and that can mean de-rusting. Uh, that could be, uh, I mean, a number of different things, maybe replacing some, some small components, but we're pre preparing the internal components. And then prime, priming the interior and exterior components uh, with and, and then coating them with our high-performance coatings, which, which again, we'll get into more in a few moments. And that's what, that's steps three through five there. And then lastly, um, if there is fiberglass insulation uh, that's deteriorated to the point that needs to be restored, we, we, we reinsert uh, what we call our pure cell insulation, which we'll also I'll also get into more. But that's sort of a 30,000 foot view of the six steps of an HVAC new life restoration. So here's a here's a diagram of the anatomy of an air handler. Um, and again, we're looking at here four four pieces that are pointed out as the as the final products uh, once this once this process is is completed. An environmentally clean coil from our pure steam process. That's that's what you see is number one there. Then internal and external, external components coated with antimicrobial high performance coating. That's what you see number two is referred to as pure coat. Then number three referred to as uh, pure liner. The drain pan after it's treated uh, and de-rusted is, is, is coated with antimicrobial high performance flexible coating. And finally, the insulation is replaced with the pure cell, as I mentioned before. So this kind of gives you, again, a, a looking down on the air handler, what's going on here when we're talking about HVAC New Life uh, from the hygienic perspective of, of restoring the unit. Excellent. So that first step process is, is our steam coil cleaning process. And, you know, uh, what's really great about this is that it's a Green Clean uh, Institute certified product, right? So we're using in, in these steam boilers, and, and I know that it kind of looks like a pressure washer, uh, but it, it is shooting out uh, high temperature and low pressure steam, and that's it. There's water in the boiler, and the steam comes out of the gun tip. So uh, when we get ready to steam this uh, air handler unit, and it's not just coil cleaning, but the real magic happens uh, on and within the coils, using this process, but we set up a steam and particulate contaminant area. So, uh, you know, obviously being IAQ focused, if we're working inside of mechanical rooms, inside of a building, you know, we're trying to make sure that temperature and humidity within that building is, is regulated. So we don't need this moist, humid steam coming out of the mechanical room and billowing down the halls and affecting carpet and ceiling tiles and and uh, furnishings and anything like that. So we set up a, a contaminant area uh, and that also keeps any particulate that's coming off of the unit uh, when uh, we're steaming it clean. Uh, then before we actually even start the uh, cleaning process, uh, we take what's called a coil cleanliness verification test. And this, this is a measurement and verification test where we traverse the coils uh, with a fan. Now the unit's off, you know, we're licensed mechanical uh, mm -hmm. contractors. So we work with the facility directors. We follow all of the guidelines and lockout tagout protocols to be, you know, safe for doing this, of course. So I want to back up there. But what we do is the unit's off. We put a blower on it and we traverse the coils in different zones, depending on how big uh, of a coil it is. And we take readings on cubic feet per minute and uh, linear feet per minute. And we look at how fouled each one of these zones are and they're written down in our data log and this gives our project managers and lead men uh, the knowledge of what areas of this coil need to be worked more than others what are showing the most signs of fouling uh, we can also do 
uh, static pressure testing as well uh, across the coil on both sides so that we can take a look at the performance. And this all adds up to not only uh, making sure we're held accountable and that this process is working, but it's also going to show energy efficiency improvements uh, that you can take uh, in a report and use, uh, you know, for other purposes, such as getting grants through your energy initiative programs and stuff. So we're going to take that test. We're going to log it. We know what the condition of the coil is in. Uh, next, the entire unit, not just the coil, not just the pan, but the entire unit is uh, HEPA vacuumed. Uh, so that's going to get any particulate up, uh, any any rust, any of the, the loose dust that is on it. Uh, and it's a wet, dry process. So if there's biofilm or anything mm -hmm. like that, uh, that will get uh, vacuumed up as well. So once the unit has been you know, superficially cleaned by being vacuumed, then we fire up the steam. And that's where the process uh, really gets to work. You know, a lot of folks, you know, they, they say, oh, well, I pressure wash my unit. That's, that's not even close to what this is. This is an intensive process, a time intensive process. And the, you know, the pressure is a big part of this. We do so many air handlers across the country and we find coils and coil fins that have been irreparably damaged by using too high of a pressure from a pressure washer. It bends the fins completely over. Um, and in order to fix that, if it can be fixed, you have to do a long process of unbending the fins and it takes forever. So part of the, part of the, the development of this proprietary process is figuring out what's the ideal pressure to hit the coil with when we use our high temperature steam. And so we stick around 350 PSI because we found through a lot of trial and error that that is the perfect pressure to be able to penetrate even thick coils. We're talking coils 16 inches uh, thick. And, that, and, and, and so that the steam, the high temperature and the combination of the pressure can start breaking down these microbials and debris that are impacted inside that coil so it can eventually start coming down and flowing out of the drain pan. And we'll, so we'll sit there for hours and hours. Sometimes we'll be steaming the coil for two, three, four hours, and eventually you finally, all right, then you start seeing the stuff come start start coming out. So it's a it's a it's a very professional process. Our guys are trained in very you know unique techniques about what angles to hit the coil at, hitting the coil from both sides. We have a we actually have a, a training facility here with a with an air handler and duct system just just uh, developed for the purpose of training. Uh, our technicians uh, for steam cleaning coils and cleaning ductwork. So it's there's a lot behind this process uh, than than the average chemical coil cleaning process that you see a lot out there, or just or taking a an old pressure washer to an air handler. No, that's true. Uh, we we have a variety of different units too that we use in different scenarios and different types of air handler units. Uh, and and these range from very small dry steam units to very large diesel boilers that we use for like rooftop units uh, outside. And so all these devices are here in our training lab. We train all of our lead men and project managers on them, on the kind of gun tips that they're used, uh, safety uh, mechanisms, of course, uh, full PPE is always required. Uh, you know, the, what angle that you have to hit the coils at. So there's a lot to it. Uh, it is pretty much a proprietary process at the level that we do it. Uh, you're just not gonna see it. Uh, so the, the pressure is what really, really gets in there and dislodges a lot of the, the physical fouling, but it's the temperature, Frank, right? The temperature uh, that really gets in there and sterilizes it too and helps us from that hygiene perspective. Yeah, the temperature is key. And we actually had to specially design our, our steam equipment to maintain that high temperature. So it, again, it's it's a very intense process. And, and Troy, show, show the before and after picture here. We have lots of before and after pictures we can, we can show. We don't have the time for it all, but... Um, as you can see there, just an example of, of how well the steam does in cleaning. And again, we're not even seeing the full picture here because really the key is how well it's doing in removing material impacted inside the coil, which you can't see with the naked eye, but you can tell from, from doing the measurement verification tests that we do. Right. When we're done steaming, we, we flush all of the latent material that might still sort of be in there uh, at 55 gallons a minute. And we're maintaining that water extraction as we're high uh, capacity flushing it as sort of that final step. And then again, we traverse the coil with M and B testing to make sure that it was the job well done. So again, we, we've done many different case studies and uh, white papers uh, on this process over the years. This particular white paper 
uh, again, through the Continental Automated Building Association, uh, peer reviewed and jointly published, uh, was actually back from 2014, 2015. And it was the evaluation of steam uh, cleaning and H, uh, a AHU coil sanitization and energy conservation. Look, basically saying that we're gonna go in there, we're gonna disinfect this coil and we're gonna get you some some efficiency ratings back on this. Yeah, so independent white paper found that when, when, when you test what they call CFUs, colony former units of microbials, bacteria and fungi, pre and post steam cleaning, you're seeing a significant reduction. And in, in the case of this particular study, uh, a complete reduction in all bacteria detectable levels and a 99% reduction in all fungal elements. And if you look on the bottom of that table, the bottom two rows go into the airflow and air velocity improvement. So we're talking some pretty serious numbers, folks. Again, we're not going to delve into this too much, but we have copies of this white paper if anybody, anybody wants to look at it. Uh, there's a, you know, th this kind of improvement in airflow results in an improvement in uh, operational efficiency. Um, and there's there's obviously a lot of different factors go into calculating energy efficiency in an HVAC system. But just by way of example, we had a, a large uh, university that we cleaned about 4 million campus square feet for them a few years back. And the cost for them was about 14 cents a square foot to do our uh, proprietary steam process. And at the end of the, at the end of the first year, they came back to us and they, they calculated that they were saving about 22 cents per square foot uh, from, from the steam coral cleaning process. So in their case, the payback was less than a year. Again, not, you always see a, a less than a year payback, but you, but you do see significant operational efficiencies from this process. So again, just an example of the, uh, the efficacy of using uh, this process um, as part of our HVAC restoration. And as, as you can see here on this slide, Duke Energy um, has uh, started a steam cleaning rebate at $20 per ton for all customers within Duke Energy's uh, Florida, and they actually just started for the Carolina uh, customers as well. So again, uh, you know, even Duke has adopted uh, steam cleaning as a, as a recognizable way to save energy in your HVAC system. And they don't just take our word for it. They come out periodically and take a look at the equipment, make sure it's operational, make sure it's doing what we say it does. And uh, you know we thank Duke for that because you know it, it really does make a difference. Again, here's another uh, tremendous case study uh, in energy efficiency uh, that we conducted with uh, Georgia Tech University, and Georgia Tech also had their own balancing people on site uh, to be running their own numbers about it. Yeah, yeah. So NEB certified report came out of this, and Bob line we saw a 42.6 percent improvement in CFM. Um, so we, we really saw some great improvements. I mean, you're talking about in the case of uh, the, the test air handler, it was operating at about 15 ton capacity, even though it was a 25 ton air handler. And at the end of it, uh, of our process, it was actually operating at a 22 ton uh, capacity. So we added essentially seven tons of air conditioning uh, through this restoration process. So really, really interesting numbers for, for a process that doesn't, doesn't cost that much. So when we start talking about you know, age of unit, condition of coils, and, and how it's functioning, we we really can get it back to near factory spec uh, when we're talking about doing some of these restorations. So it, it's pretty remarkable, the results that we've been seeing in the build. Yeah, there was actually, I don't know if I told you about this, Troy, but there's a, ho uh, a hospital we just did where they had an independent T&B company come in uh, before and after we cleaned uh, some of their air handlers. And... The air handlers we did were operating at about 62% to 67%, depending on the air handler, uh, of design air volume at 60 hertz. After we did the restoration process, they were operating between 87% and 93% wow. of design air volume at 60 hertz. So again, really amazing results from this. But again, I'm not gonna, we won't belabor this. We have a lot to cover here. Um, so another, another example, looking at smaller hotel room units um, where we, we did our restoration process and measured before and after CFMs, before and after Delta T. Um, and again, we can, we can go into this more if, um, you know, individually, but the bottom line on this particular resort, and we're talking the 600 to 650 room resort, but by virtue of increasing the efficiency of their air handlers, we were able to add 300 tons of air conditioning uh, through this process. 
So again, and that's all verified through, through the study. So again, really, really Im big improvements from a straightforward process of restoration and cleaning. Yeah, excellent. So that's the pure steam process. So once we get done uh, steaming the inside of the air handler unit, bringing that efficiency back to the coils, everything is clean and ready for any additional preparation. Uh, and then we're ready to start doing the coatings. Yep. So you know, we, you know, you look at um, obviously if there's a if there's a rust issue within the unit, you're obviously going to remove that rust uh, through a variety of different ways. One way we use is a is a garnet blasting method. Um, but once all that rust is removed and we've identified, make sure all the components are working correctly, we'll go in there and we'll prime and we'll coat the unit. And we coat the unit with an antimicrobial corro corrosion resistant coating we call Pure Coat here. And we have a lot of information on, on Pure Coat that we can that we actually I think we include as a as a handout, right, Troy? There is. There's a yeah. handout uh, about Pure Coat and about the HVAC New Life process compared to other uh, commercially available coatings that are out there. So basically, these two handouts, they're they're you can download them. They're both uh, lightweight PDFs, but they're going to go through all of the rigorous testing uh, that our manufacturer has put these products through. Uh, there's uh, a glossary of the different kinds of tests uh, that they do, like sea salt spray tests, uh, temperature and thermal testing, uh, how they uh, look at the fire safety of these products. Uh, they are low VOC products. I mean, there's still some VOCs uh, that can be attributed to them. Again, we're in full PPE when we use it. Uh, but like we said earlier, we're doing this work outside of normal operating hours, uh, you know, nights and weekends. And by the time that system's fired up, uh, that VOC uh, level uh, is right back down to normal. And we'll, I think we'll also hit on another way we can monitor that as we're working on it. Uh, but anyways, uh, that is NSF approved. Uh, it has antimicrobial properties, uh, anti-corrosive properties, and it is a multi-coat siloxane uh, coating. So again, very, very useful, flexible. It can stand the rigors of temperature swings, uh, of uh, coolness, of humidity, uh, and of the unit coming on and uh, going off again. So we go through and we coat the entire unit. Of course, the containment is maintained. Uh, key components, electrical components are all masked off. So, you know, essentially we're we're like the, you know, auto body shop of, of uh, you know, mechanical contractors that are going to come in here and, and, and really refinish these units to almost better than new. As you know, as some of you uh, the mechanical uh, in the contractors and uh, facility guys know, some of these units that are coming directly from the factory is new. They're not even coming with the coating. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's raw metals in, in some cases, or it's a very thin paint on these rooftop mm -hmm. units. And within a year or two years, they're faded, they're, they're, they're uh, getting chalky and, and whatnot. And these coatings, they don't do that. The water beads up on them, it runs off of them. They're almost like a rubberized paint that really impedes uh, that kind of moisture and corrosion. And drain pans are obviously a big piece of the puzzle. Anybody who's been in a bunch of air handlers knows that drain pans are a place where microbial proliferation can occur and, be, and actually become aerosolized, in other words, get into the air where water leaks can happen because there's there's different uh, you know uh, openings in the drain pan so these that's a big part of this process and going through and giving a lot of attention to the drain pan removing the rust in some cases having to uh, lay down some new sheet metal to because they're so they're in such bad shape and and laying down a new uh, coating an epoxy coating we refer to as pure liner to give it a brand new look free from leaks and that in a way that's going to give also be antimicrobial. Excellent. And it's true, as you can see from these pictures, and we've seen much worse uh, too, that it does a remarkable job. Now, the um, an often overlooked piece of air handler cleaning and air handler restoration is the fiberglass insulation. And this is one of the biggest places that like pathogenic nasty organisms like aspergillus can grow. Uh, it, it, it's just a way, it's, it's, it's an ideal place for dust and debris and even human skin cells to uh, link on and then for, uh, and after that bacteria and fungi to, to, link, to link up with them and have a place to proliferate. Uh, so Pure Cell is an insulation we developed in which we re replace all the fiberglass insulation and put in a zero porosity fiberglass free 
a closed cell material, as you can see the before and after picture there of one of our projects. Yeah, it's, again, it repels moisture, fiberglass free, it, Green Guard certified, uh, highly uh, fire rated, and it's also uh, CFC and HCFC free. Again, hitting on that sustainability factor. Uh, you know, we've we've been in situations where uh, with, with certain customers where we have put this in 10, 15 years ago, and we've come back to do some maintenance, some coil cleaning on it, and yeah, it's a little dusty and dirty. We just take a cloth and wipe it off and it's as white as you see in that picture. Yeah, in fact, uh, we just had one where it was installed in the late 1990s and it was still, we were, we were doing a, a restoration process and we came in there and it was the pure cell was still in there looking good. So we're really interesting um, an excellent product. Um, I think we're gonna do a quiz here. No, not quite yet. Okay, so let's go through a, bef a couple before and after pictures. Um, again, we won't spend a whole lot of time on these, but just kind of give everybody an idea of before and after uh, from from doing this HVAC new light process. All right, so this is your standard RTU. You can see that, again, that sort of faded chalkiness on, on the external paint, some rust. We got in there, cleaned it up, and now it has this this mm. basically fact better than factory new uh, coating. Oh, Troy, you know what? Let's do a quiz real quick I'm so we don't, we don't push them all toward, toward the end. Oh, okay, yeah. we can do that. So I guess we what next up is what we would like to do is know what kind of, uh, or what is an example of a pathogenic, uh, you know, microbe could be growing, pathogenic mold that could be growing inside of the HVAC system? Mm -hmm. Drain pans, uh, in the insulation. On the insulation, yep. Yeah, so we'll, we'll give it about five more seconds. It looks like 50% of you have voted. Some more votes are coming in. It's looking pretty good. He's covered it a couple of times. Okay, any more responses? Oh, there's a couple. I don't want to cut you off. All right, we're going to go ahead and close that right now and we'll share the results. And it looks like most of you uh, had, have got it right. 92% said aspergillus. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that is a mold uh, that can cause respiratory issues. Uh, wheeziness, runny nose, yeah, it's a, it can eyes. be a very dangerous mold, especially for immunocompromised individuals. So yes, it's something so that we'll we're, get, we're very cognizant of. We'll get back to some of these hero shots now uh, that are from our jobs. And now, you know, it might bear mentioning, and I alluded to it before with the CC uh, V testing, coil cleanliness verification testing, but all of our jobs, uh, we log all of the data, all of the before photos, uh, some process photos, and then after photos and compile them into a, a very detailed report that you can keep uh, on hand to show what came through this. So all of these before and after photos that you're seeing, Frank, right? Th these are all in reports. This is These are real world photos. Yep, we have a bunch of, of example reports. If anybody wants to see them, just contact us. Yeah, absolutely. So this is showing sort of the interior of the cabinet. It's showing uh, the drain pan. You can see sort of the clean coils over there. And then a lot of these components, the dampers uh, and, and what have you, uh, again, coming through and looking at some of this uh, interior components here where you see a lot of the rust and corrosion. Uh, and then afterwards, it, it's all been coated and sealed up uh, very nice, you know, along the filter banks uh, and everything. And as Troy is going through these pictures, I'll just make mention, we, we're not going to get into a lot today, but we can do a lot of different component upgrades or replacements, whether it's dampers, uh, you know, controls, belts, things of that nature. So that's that's all, you know, depending on the, the nature of the air handler, there's a lot of things we can we can look at to upgrade it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even if you look at this uh, photo, that drain pan, you know, it, it was kind of corroded, had holes in it. We, we can do some uh, sheet metal work and, and rebuild the drain pans and then coat it mm -hmm. so that it's completely sealed uh, up. So it's a it's a pretty uh, interesting process. Again, this this dries like rubbery coating. Uh, here you can see some of the microbial uh, and, and biofilm uh, that deposited in this drain pan. Uh, you know, and, and drain pans are a cool, wet, damp place where these microbes can also grow. Yeah, a lot of things can grow in drain pans, including Legionella. Yeah, yeah. And, and and Legionella is is not a, a fun thing to tangle with, especially if it's growing in your AC system. It's downstream and then it's be getting distributed into the building. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, you know, we don't, 
don't want to see that happen to anybody in their facilities. Uh, so this product, uh, the entire process, HVAC New Life, the restoration, it's a warrantied product. So, you know, you might not see, you know, you know, ex huge extended warranties on this, but rest assured that uh, we at Pira Control Services, we warranty our workmanship mm -hmm. on uh, all of these services uh, with a one-year workmanship warranty. And then our manufacturer uh, has a five-year uh, limited manufacturing warranty uh, on the Pure Coat and the Pure Liner products. Yep. So uh, the the products that we've developed with them and we're using, uh, they stand behind them. They they again rigorously tested. You can download the handouts and um, and, and take a look for yourself at, at what these products have gone through to be certified, be compliant, and be, and be fully tested and ready for this application. Um, Let's talk about you switch know, gears a little. Yeah, bit. Bring, a little brainstorm here about how 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 can you pay for this? So a lot of folks don't think about this um, intuitively to think about, all right, this has to be paid out of operations, operations budget, but that's not necessarily true. Um, because HVAC restoration increases the useful lifespan of an asset, in this case, the air handler, restoration can be purchased and then depreciated out of the capital or CapEx budget, just like, just like as if you were replacing the air handler. Um, it's, it's extremely big benefit when comparing restoration to replacement during the cost benefit analysis. On average, uh, the hard cost and labor for our HVAC new life is about one tenth of the cost of, of replacement. So yeah, putting this into the realm of capital expenditure really takes this uh, restoration process uh, into an apples for apples comparison because now you're not taking your precious uh, operational budget and trying to say, well, this is a maintenance proposition. You know, now you're taking and looking at uh, you know, paying for this out of your capital expenditure budget and being able to depreciate it uh, as if it was a new purchase. You're increasing the useful lifespan of uh, the asset. So in like the case of this major Florida, another major Florida university that we did, uh, they were projecting uh, 15 rooftop units, which basically covered their whole campus, was going to need replacing. And these units were maybe 10, 12, 15 years old. They weren't in incredibly old. Um, and so we got in there, we, we did a site uh, visit, we did a walkthrough, we uh, evaluated some of these units, but look, you know, you don't have to replace all of these. We can restore them for basically what ended up one tenth of the cost. So, you know, a lot of times people ask us, well, you know, I would much rather depreciate, you know, 1.2 million or $3 million over five or seven years, uh, because that's more beneficial to me taking those credits over those years. But, you know, I say to them, look, you're saving two million bucks right off of the top, mm -hmm. and then still being able to depreciate, you know, in, in that case, you know, 200 grand or something, you know, and be able to to extend it out again with the warranty, uh, you know, it's almost a no-brainer at that point. I mean, not every unit's going to be, uh, you know, uh, a, a candidate, candidate yep. for this, but it, the majority of them we find can be restored. So, you know, what, what could your organization do with a million bucks? Yeah, it's I mean, a good thought experiment. I mean, imagine if, you know, if you're a school district, could you buy, use the extra capital budget to buy more computers for the kids? Or is there a particular piece of equipment that you really need that you'd like to have? Well, if you save a million dollars on the, on the HVAC project, then you could possibly get that new piece of equipment uh, that you need, or maybe, you, maybe you need a new chiller. So you get a new chiller. And then you have time and then you can restore your air handler. So there's a lot, a lot of ways to think about this in terms of the, the initial cost savings. Well, the chiller, uh, the, the chiller scenario is a very good one, Frank, because, uh, you know, oftentimes we're hit with the, the uh, you know, energy consultants and say, well, look, you know, most of our energy loss is in the chiller. And, you know, these are big expenditures, a, a chiller. Uh, you know, you could probably get about 10 air handler units for the price of one chiller or something in that neighborhood, right? But, you know, these air handler units are critical components too. It's a domino effect. You could have a brand new chiller put in, but if these 10 or 15 units are operating, you know, well less than peak efficiency, it's going to have a down chain effect and, and really could still be affecting your energy efficiency. So, uh, you know, a, a, a you know, something to think about as far as this thought experiment with CapEx versus operational expenditure is that, look, you know, we know a lot of these organizations and institutions are operating under a deferred maintenance program. You know, there's school systems that have constantly kicked to the can uh, and, you know, we're coming out of a recession, let's say, and they're very, very far behind 
with some of uh, their deferred maintenance. Well, now you don't have to try to make all of that up out of your maintenance budget because you can recapitalize this equipment by restoring it and pay for it out of the new levy that's putting new money into capital expenditures. So you can restore it with CapEx. You can reserve your OpEx for critical maintenance and operational needs, uh, you know, as this slide is showing. Um, so things, so we talked about CapEx, cap, capital expenditures, operations, um, budgets. So let's think about, you know, how can you actually take on something like this? Well, you need to have some good information. Um, you need to have, be able to have a good idea of your mechanical inventory, your air handlers, you know, how, what, what, what size are they? What kind of condition are they in? Um, you, know, uh, you know, do you have an updated mechanical schedule? So all, there's a lot that goes into this. So one service we offer is we, uh, we have an industrial hygiene building science department. And so uh, we, we do a lot of work for a lot of different types of commercial facilities from hospitals to schools in which we'll go into a campus and we'll do a, what we call an HVAC hygiene assessment or mechanical assessment. We'll go in and we'll look at every single air handler and identify uh, the hygiene of the air handler based on a number of different um, protocols, but also get all the mechanical information for that air handler, do some M MMV testing, and then the organization can use that for planning purposes for the next five years. It's true. You know, it, it's it's a very proactive approach. Uh, it, it's relatively inexpensive, especially if you don't have one, because uh, you might say, well, my units are, are 15 years old. I'm just going to replace them all. They're getting near the end of life. And you might be leaving money on the table. A lot of those might be in good shape if they're cleaned up. So it provides that visibility. It's helpful in that prioritization, right, when you're looking at restoration versus new. Uh, and, and it's important to a regular maintenance program. Mm -hmm. um, and this next slide, we're not going to cover this in depth because we, we we sort of uh, talked about it um, throughout the, the previous few slides. But just looking at, you know, based on the average efficiency improvements of new air handlers versus restored units, you can extrapolate the cost savings into the future. And the efficiency gains you would get from a new air handler are, are pretty comparable to what you get from restoring the, the air handler through HVAC New Life such that the financial savings uh, that you get from a new handler uh, don't make up for the huge capital expenditure you have in year one. Uh, that's, that's what this chart's trying to show. And we can provide this chart to anybody that wants a copy of it, but we're just trying to show that you're, 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 showing, you're seeing a, a very little difference in efficiency uh, from a new versus a restored unit. And so why, why spend uh, 10 times the amount of money? We, we can also provide this financial energy savings summary as an addendum to a mechanical inventory or, or HVAC hygiene uh, assessment, you know, across the board, if you want to take a look at what kind of savings you could look at with steam or the restoration process. Hey, listen, Frank, I think I'm going to launch one more quiz question. Yep. We're really going to uh, take them back to the beginning. We'll see who's hung in here with us and uh, we'll remember uh, what this was since we're talking about energy savings and sustainability here. But uh, what kind of costs are often overlooked uh, that can also affect uh, the environment or sustainability? So, uh, or even the price of putting the air handler in. That's correct. Oh, yeah. Versus restoring it. So we'd hope that we'd uh, get you all in here, 40% in. Now you guys know this. Look at this. Let me give it a couple more seconds here. And all right, I'm going to go ahead and close it. We'll share the results. Again, it looks like most of you are uh, on track to get some coffee on us from Starbucks. And you all said 95% uh, of you said all of the above. So, you know, freight, shipping, scrapping the old units, having a crane to take the RTUs off and put the new ones on. These all are costs that add in to above retail cost of the actual equipment. So, uh, pretty interesting stuff when you start to break down everything uh, that's involved uh, with the replacement versus the restoration. So we're going to quickly go through uh, a couple more things that can affect uh, the hygiene and a couple of the things that we do here yeah. at Pure Air. Yeah, we, we've been remiss not to mention a key component of the overall HVAC restoration process, and that's environmental duct cleaning. Um, and it, it, it's a it's an intense, complicated process, but Essentially, what you're doing is going through the return duct and the supply duct, and you're environmentally cleaning that duct work. 
um, and also the exhaust duct in, in, in some cases as well. Uh, you know, a couple examples where you see this, so when new air handlers are put in to a system, but, but the ducts, the old ducts are left there, the extra air volume blown through the, the old ducts that have accumulated dirt and debris over the years blows stuff out of the vents. You see that quite a bit. So, you know, the, you know, environmental duct cleaning is a very key piece of maintaining the, uh, the efficiency and the sanitary hygienic condition of your air in the system. Just show them a few before and after pictures, Troy. Yeah, here we go. Uh, just an example there of, of in, in, uh, metal, metal duct on the inside and then, of course, as we know, there's also a lot of fiberglass uh, insulation duct. So you can see that that can also be cleaned. It's, it's a different process. You don't use, uh, you can't obviously agitate the fiberglass when you're cleaning um, uh, fiberglass insulated ducts. So you have to be use more a HEPA vacuum process and compressed air um, and then encapsulate it with an antimicrobial paint. So it's, you can see there before and after <laughs> of a tennis ball from a dormitory. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is a big deal too, uh, where people often don't think of the entire system as a whole, even if they're doing a one-for-one -one swap with a, a new unit, but not redesigning the ductwork or anything that that unit's attaching to, and it says these reheat coils or yeah, yeah, re reheat coils. coils can reheat coils in the supply, uh, and the VAVs in the and the supply ductwork can can become extremely debris filled um, and clogged. So that's just an example there of that situation. Uh, we've had many clients. We had one university, university client last year where we uh, we uh, were we competed with a different company to uh, clean the ductwork um, and the reheat coils and VAVs. We were we, our price was higher than our competitor, but the competitor went in there and did not clean or didn't do a good job of cleaning the VAVs and reheat coils for this particular client. So they ended up hiring us afterwards. Um, and paying a lot more money because they'd hire us to come in after um, and redo all the 175 or so reheat coils and VAVs, uh, yeah. you know, and, and also create access doors to both sides of the VAVs and reheat coils. So again, not, not to get lost in the woods here, but again, we're trying to show you that it's a complete uh, process here. The air, the HVAC system is made up more of the air, made up made up more more than the air handler. It's a ductwork, the air handler, the cooling tower. It's it's a it's a comprehensive uh, look at this. The, the system. All right. Well, we're right about on time or a little bit over. We only have a couple more slides left. And look, it, the, the bottom line is, is, is you can be proactive with the IAQ experts here at Pure Air Control Services. You know, we were founded in 84. We're just not a, a, a some fly-by-night company that, that popped up. Uh, you know, we, we constantly train and re-educate our people. Uh, we've had over 600 million plus square feet of experience in, in over 10,000 uh, plus buildings service, uh, service. So, you know, we're a graduated 8A. Uh, we do have a GSA schedule R, R contract. We have a variety of, of cooperative uh, awarded contracts that can be uh, utilized as well as some piggybacking contracts. Uh, so we're very comfortable uh, working with governmental agencies, military agencies, uh, schools, universities, uh, commercial institutions, you name it, on this level, uh, we've probably done it and then some. Yeah, and, and our, all our work, whether it's uh, HVAC new life restoration, uh, whether it's uh, steam coil cleaning, duct cleaning, it's all supported by industrial hygiene, building sciences, and environmental laboratory staff. We have industrial hygienists on staff, we have full-time PhD aerobiologists in our lab, um, so we we are an environmental company that takes takes their work very very seriously from an environmental perspective. Um, we do a lot of work in hospitals, for example, in which we're doing a lot of quality assurance, quality control, in conjunction with our uh, HVAC restoration, our, our duct cleaning, and things of that nature. Um, by the way, our, and our lab also is a CDC certified lab for testing Legionella as well. Uh, Legionella obviously is a to come full circle here is something that, is, as I mentioned before, can, can grow in drain pans and provide, you know, be, be a very dangerous organism and causes Legionnaire's disease. So, <clears throat> again, it, it, just to show you the full scope of our environmental services. Yeah, so we referenced the, the Harvard uh, job that we did, you know, earlier on as far as it being a situation where we had to restore these units in place. We couldn't get into the... Uh, or they couldn't get into ripping walls out and or piecemealing a unit, taking it apart piece by piece, getting it out of there, and then taking a whole new unit off of the back of the truck and putting it together piece by piece 
in the new mechanical room, but this is just a, a snapshot of, of, you know, what they saw, especially with the coil cleaning. Yep. Again, we're proud to have clients like Harvard as part of our, our client list. Yep. Now let's, let's talk to them. Let's just mention real quick. Uh, we have an app out there for both on the Android phones. It's called the IAQ quick check, check app. And I won't, I'm not gonna, we won't get into it too much, Troy, but if you want to tell them a, just a quick summary about the app. Well, hey, look, you know, we were talking about doing this mechanical inventory or, or HVAC hygiene assessment. And what this app is going to do, uh, and, and it, it's already available for Android and Apple on, on both of their respective stores, Google Play and iTunes App Store. Um, but we're, we're constantly improving it. Uh, but you can download it for free. And basically, there's different sections uh, inside of this app that guide you through a step-by-step form-based uh, way of inputting data that we're going to need to quickly quote your project. So, uh, you know, you would download the app, you would select, I want new life, and it will go right through all of uh, the steps. It would ask you all of, all of the pertinent information, uh, you know, size of the unit, how many tons, square footage uh, that is being serviced, location of the unit. Uh, that kind of stuff. It also has camera access, so you'll be able to take and send pictures of the condition of the equipment uh, that we would want to look at. So, uh, you know, that's a very exciting uh, proposition uh, to be able to put, you know, the the power of doing one of these assessments, like right in your hand. You get done inputting the data, hit submit, and it goes right to us, uh, to our estimation team, and they'll be working on it and be able to turn the quote around uh, in no time. So, uh, and we're almost out of time. So we're gonna give you this gimme question. I'm gonna launch it now, uh, going back to the, the drain pans and whatnot, but what, what are the dangers of having an old, dirty, water-retaining drain pan? So is it that uh, Legionella can grow? Uh, microbial proliferation uh, can become aerosolized and uh, distributed through the system, or that water leaks could even uh, happen uh, due to the rusting. So uh, we'll leave this open. It looks like about 75% of you have voted. We'll give it a couple more seconds. 77% in. Any any last takers? Got to get four out of five right to get that uh, Starbucks gift card. So hey, there we go. Looks like we're in. I'm going to go ahead and close it and we'll share. And it looks like 100% of you got it right. So maybe maybe that was a gimme question. But no, the, you know, drain pans can be a significant cause of issues, uh, not only to the IAQ, but the actual building envelope itself by providing moisture intrusion in other areas of the building that could cause mold issues and uh, everything uh, down the road. So that's why you got to keep an eye on this stuff and uh, keep it going. So, and Troy, while, while we're on the topic of the questions, what, let's do our last question too. And how can we help you? What, what's caught your eye today about this particular seminar? Um, and uh, what, what, are the, what are the four we have there, Troy, or five? So I'm going to go ahead and launch this. This will just help us get a better idea how to follow up or where maybe you are at with some of these ideas. So, you know, let us know how we can help you. Uh, is it that you would be looking to have us come help you do a HVAC hygiene assessment or inventory, uh, a building health check, uh, which is sort of our baseline IAQ testing, so we can see the condition that your building uh, is in currently? Uh, pure steam, AHU coil cleaning is a sort of separate service, mm -hmm. or the whole HVAC New Life restoration. Uh, and of course, as it being a specialized type of area, uh, Legionella testing and analysis. We do culture, non-culture, and we do DNA level testing for quick turnaround on Legionella. Yeah, so, a lot of folks think you need two weeks for a Legionella test, but we actually can turn it around in 24 hours uh, with our PCR DNA testing. Yeah, so you, mm -hmm. you know, check all that apply. Looks like about 38% of you are in. We can leave this open uh, just a little bit longer. We do want to thank you for coming today. I know we're, we ran a little bit over, maybe about five minutes over. Um, you're happy to email us or contact us, and um, you know we'll be able to uh, get back with you as soon as possible. We'll probably follow up. Uh, of this webinar to see if you have any immediate needs. Again, here's Frank's contact information. His mobile phone is listed there if you want to jot it down. And uh, again, thank you for coming.